Luck may have run out for these four men caught up in a crackdown on what is described as a multi-million dollar illegal gambling racket. More details tonight about a massive federal investigation that closed several local internet cafes. Good evening. News since 6 o'clock. We're learning more about how federal agents say a nonprofit based locally took in $290 million and then allegedly lied about how much money was given to charity. We're also tracking how some of those funds were paid out here in Jacksonville. At the center of the investigation is this man, Jerry Bass, co owner of Allied Veterans of the World. He was arrested here in Jacksonville today, also in custody on the right side of your screen, former Jacksonville Bar Association President Kelly Mathis and Fraternal Order of Police President Nelson Cuba, along with Union Vice President Robbie Freitas. We're covering this story from several angles. Adrian Moore is talking with a retired local police officer about the arrests of Cuba and Freitas and getting FOP reaction. Cuba and Freitas, both of whom are Jacksonville police officers, are in jail tonight in Seminole County. Scott Johnson has video of one of the raids carried out today at eight local internet cafes. But we begin with Jennifer Waugh, who shows us where investigators say some of these millions meant for military veterans actually went. Jen? Is in this 130 page search warrant detailing where profits from 43 internet cafes around our state ended up. Federal investigators say that Allied Veterans told everyone on its website, on its Facebook page, that the money was going to help needy veterans and their families. But the feds say that's not true. Instead, the warrant shows this. Check out the numbers. That only about 2% of the $290 million it was made over six years went to needy vets. In 2008, Allied received $5 million, then $1.3 million in 2009. But the real story these numbers, these amounts, 5.7 million, 8.1 million, that's the money the Fed say Allied funneled into a for profit organization that it also opened, and that its, owned, its owners use the money for their own gain. One of those owners is Jerry Bass. The warrant says that he received $250,000 over six years from money made off those internet cafes around the state, and that he and another owner also used the profits to buy beachfront condos, commercial buildings, other homes. Federal investigators also listed local companies in this warrant that received illegal proceeds, it says, from these gambling cafes. Nearly $13,000 paid to Allied's local attorney, Kelly Mathis's firm, more than $23,000 paid to a local well-known PR and marketing agency, and $25,000 that was given to the Republican Party of Florida. I do want to stress that investigators are not suggesting that the law firm or the PR marketing agency or the Republican Party did anything illegal. We, of course, are just showing you where federal authorities in this very long warrant say some of this money went. Tom? Thank you, Jen. Besides making arrests, law enforcement raided Allied Veterans Internet Cafes here in Jacksonville. There are eight of them, as you can see in this video, at scattered locations all around Duval County. Channel 4 Scott Johnson was at one of the cafes, Elite 68 on Beach Boulevard, when police and federal agents were serving a search warrant on the place. Scott is joining us now live. Scott, how did customers react to this raid? Not well. They were shocked. They were scared. And a lot of them are out money that they don't know how to get back. This is a facility that the owners say right here. They said this is not a gaming establishment. Apparently, the federal government disagrees. They went in here today closed the place down. They did not arrest anyone here, but they did shut it down, lock it up, and this is all that's left. It says, due to technical issues, we will be closed until further notice. Those technical issues mean a major search warrant that was served right here. When federal agents went into internet cafes across Jacksonville to seize computers and other evidence in their federal case, Kari Woods had no idea what was going on. The FBI came in with a whole bunch of masks. They came in, told nobody not to move. They said if you had any money that you were going to receive, that you weren't going to get the money, um, that this place was a scam. They said that they were, you know, posing themselves as a uh, internet cafe, but really they are a, a gambling casino. Everyone was told to leave. I think it's sad because people really do use the last dollar to go in there to try to make double it up and then. That's it, and then it's a scam. 
These internet cafes have been a source of political debate in Florida. They have electronic gaming machines that critics say are basically slot machines. In fact, there's legislation in the Florida House now to ban any new cafes. That many regulars I talk to say cause a lot of people to lose money. All those people coming in there using their last $20? That's charity. That's charity. They could have gave it to us. The major issue in the federal warrant is that these cafes claimed a lot of their proceeds went to charity, roughly 70 percent. But the warrant says investigators could only account for 2 percent. And the charities aren't the only ones losing money. Many regulars tell me they still have money on their cards and no way to retrieve it. I don't know, but I know I'm stuck with my money on here and I can't get it off, so I'm just curious about what's going on. I shouldn't have left it on there before I left. But I lost $236. You did? You didn't get it back? No. They didn't give you nothing back. Whatever money you had on the other side that you just applied to it, you lost that. And whatever money you had won, you lost that too. And to give you an illustration of how much these internet cafes make, it shows in the warrant that between 2007 and 2012, the one on Blanding Boulevard made around $17 million. It also shows that all of these internet cafes made at least $2,000 any one day they were open and sometimes a whole lot more. We're live on the South Side, Scott Johnson, Channel 4, the local station. Shock and disbelief, strong reactions tonight to the arrest of FOP President Nelson Cuba and Vice President Robbie Freitas from the union's rank and file. Their role in this still unknown. The Fraternal Order of Police released a statement late this afternoon. Channel 4's Adrian Moore is joining us live now with what the FOP's Board of Trustees is saying and has more on the reaction to the investigation from the FOP. Adrian? Mary FOP member Ken Jefferson tells us that he has known the president and vice president here for more than 20 years. He says he was blown away when he heard the allegations leveled against them and believes that this gives the organization as a whole a black eye. But he's very quick to point out that all black eyes heal over time. My stomach just dropped and boiled up into a knot. I, I, I couldn't believe it. A wave of shock and disappointment from Fraternal Order of Police member Ken Jefferson. After learning two prominent and well-respected leaders in the organization were arrested on racketeering charges. Right now the mood is somber because uh, the members just can't believe this has happened. FOP President Nelson Cuba along with Vice President Robbie Freitas were among several arrested on Monday. According to federal documents, they were arrested in connection to a federal investigation into Allied Veterans of the World, a Jacksonville nonprofit that runs dozens of Internet cafes across the state. With the investigation still ongoing, Jefferson says this is not indicative of the entire FOP organization. When you betray the public trust like that, it puts a black eye on the organization, but it also puts um, a sad heart on all the men and women that's doing the right thing every day. In a statement, FOP says, quote, we have no information that any part of the FDLE investigation has been directed towards the Jacksonville FOP or the Jacksonville FOP Foundation. It is important to point out that these are private dealings that have nothing to do with FOP business. With new details expected to emerge in the coming weeks, Jefferson says FOP members will band together and rebound. And they'll move forward and they'll be stronger than ever as a result of this. Now, as we come back out live, we want to mention there was an emergency meeting held here at headquarters earlier this evening, but so far they have not named a new interim president or vice president. Adrian Moore, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Adrian. And Channel 4 is continuing to dig deeper into this illegal gambling sting. Ahead, all new at 11, we're combing through the search warrant to find out more about how federal investigators took down allied veterans. We also speak with a local attorney to find out how the RICO Act works and why it was originally used to take down the mafia. And if you'd like to read it, we've also posted all 130 pages of the search warrant on newsforjax.com. Just click inside the article under Top Stories.